Hello everyone, welcome back to Case Studies with the BizDoc. This week it's Starbucks because they made an announcement that I think is a case study in itself. They're closing the online store and we're going to take a look at that and take a look at how they, I think, are reacting to the wrong problem. And that's the lesson this week, reacting to the wrong problem. And sometimes when you're big, you're in a corner and you may have no choice. But the bold people of business and bold leaderships usually find a way to act and drive the company forward. Let's go. Let's a little history on Starbucks. You know, I had an IPO in 1992, and it went up like here, and Howard Schultz was out in 2000 after a long run with the company. He came back in 2008. And go back in the archive here at uh, Valuetainment and look at the Starbucks a case study we did. It'll give you a real look at that, because he, back here, was famous for closing all the stores for one day to do an amazing training so that you and I would get the perfect Starbucks coffee because he cared about the customer and getting the perfect product every time. It was an incredible story of recovery and focusing on the customer and he deserves a lot of credit. Nonetheless, he comes back at that time and did that and then rode, you know, got through that dip and everything that you'll see in that other case study and then rode it back up until February of 2017. This year, he said, I will no longer be the CEO. I'm going to bring my COO up to CEO and I'm going to be executive chairman and I'm still going to be involved and I'm going to be working on a thing called Reserve Roasters. So he's kind of still in the seat as a CEO or leader. The guy that's worth over three billion dollars or something by last count is still in the chair doing it. And then this is where I want to look is that for the last year this is what I think Howard Schultz and Starbucks is reacting to and the new CEO uh, Johnson. They, if you look at the last year, they started like around 54, they had this little thing, they peak, they get like 60 something, and then they end up at 54. So if you'd been asleep for a year, or you went to sleep, they were around 53, 54, you woke up a year later, they're 53, 54. So over that year, it's kind of flat stock price. So whenever things are flat, there's always pressure from Wall Street. Where's your growth coming from? Where are your earnings coming from? Where's your earnings per share? You have a return to the shareholder to think about. Are you gonna give a dividend? Chop, chop, give us some answers. Because Wall Street is a ferocious beast. But that's the price of being a public company. So now, they've got things going on here and they suddenly, rather than making forward announcements like, hey, new version of the iPad, iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone X, those are all forward announcements that get made. Suddenly we start to listen carefully and Starbucks is starting to make flat or backwards announcements. Uh, the T. Vanna stores haven't done so well, so we're gonna close those. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and we're gonna close our online store. People used to come to our online store to buy things and now we're gonna close it. To which I say, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sure, you can go to Amazon or you can go to your grocery store and buy like a big box of Keurigs uh, for your favorite Starbucks flavor. You can do a lot of things like that. But there was other things on the Starbucks store like mugs and things like that. And importantly, that's also an opportunity for Starbucks to gather what's called big data. That's data on you and me. Where do we live? How often do we buy? What did we buy? We're gathering data on that that we can turn around and turn that into marketing to help drive us back to maybe to a physical Starbucks store where we buy our favorite coffee. Well, along with this announcement, you would think that that would be good to have an online store. Suddenly they're like, no, we're not going to operate the online store anymore. And they make this this amazing statement comes out. They said, we cannot guarantee the availability of any product in stores, but we know you will find many choices to enjoy. It's like, wait a minute. So I have to go to the Starbucks store. My local Starbucks is really tiny and they only have a few things. Other Starbucks, you see there's this wall and it's enormous with all the things they got up there. So now they, this company that once upon a time, he closed for a day 4,000 locations or something to get it right for you and me so that the baristas know how to make the perfect cup of coffee, the perfect experience in the wonderful Starbucks store with the cool furniture and the music playing and the lighting and the whole experience. They want to get it right and suddenly that company, that company is putting out a note that says we cannot. Wait, 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 wait. All of that and you cannot, you cannot, you cannot. There's only one word for that and that is damn. You're the guys that say you can, you can, you can and now you're saying you cannot. I just can't roll with that. Let's think about this for a second. 
So you say you can't guarantee the availability of any particular product, but we hope you find which is something nice in the stores. That's a limiting statement. And you know, there are stores that say, come to our store, we'll help you find everything. And that used to be what online is all about. You've got infinite, near infinite inventory, not constrained by a physical space, so you can offer everything. And apparently, Starbucks doesn't want to do that. But you know what? There is a company that wants to offer you everything, the Everything Store. Remember these guys? Well, they're selling Starbucks coffee too, but Starbucks has given up that opportunity to get that good data and to run their own store and to extend the relationship with you and me. Hey, here's an idea. What if when I print out my receipt from buying something from the Starbucks online store, there's a, a QR code or something at the bottom that I can scan when I go into my local Starbucks and get a discount on my next cup of coffee. So my online purchase is rewarded with an opportunity to get a deal in the store because that's where they want me to be. I'm sure people at Starbucks got to be thinking about these things, but it sure isn't showing up. And they start singing the Wall Street tune. Hey, same store sales are like this. Top line growth, we got some issues. EPS, these are all things that point to the to the stock. If you get the company right and you get the product right and you do the right thing for the customer, this usually takes care of itself. Uh, a football coach, Bill Walsh, used to say, hey, if the execution on the field is well done and properly uh, done with good, well-coached players that are dedicated to their position, the score takes care of itself. Well, I feel the same way, that when you get it right, like close the stores, train everybody up, the stock price, look, the evidence is there. He got everybody focused on customer and product, and, the, price, and the, the, the stock price took care of itself. Well, now they're flat, and suddenly they're going in reverse. You know, closing your online stores, now let's think about it. Dunkin' Donuts up in the Northeast, you know, it's a little bit different. If you go to the Northeast, Boston, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, that little orange Dunkin' is everywhere. And if you go to like Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Seattle, you know that the Starbucks, little green Starbucks is everywhere. Well, up there, I think there's some things going on that Dunkin' seems to understand. Dunkin' still has its online store, and I can still buy Dunkin' Donuts, the big bag of coffee for traditional coffee makers. And by the way, that is the only coffee served at PHP and here at Valuetainment. And I can also get big boxes of Keurig cups with my favorite Dunkin'. And Dunkin' here also has a really cool subscription. I can actually subscribe to coffee. Like, I like the Dunkin' Medium Roast, the classic medium Dunkin' Donuts coffee that they became legendary for. I love that coffee. And I can get 24 of those sent to me automatically once a month, and the price of those is right there and actually maybe even a bit cheaper than I can find it on Amazon. So in other words, just because I'm at the Duncan website doesn't mean I'm paying like full price and maybe I could hunt around and find some vendor selling it on Amazon and get a discount. It's a subscription. So Duncan's getting data on me, but more importantly, they're keeping this relationship with me because they're sending me the box every month right about the time that I want it. And I fill up my little basket there in the kitchen and now I got my Dunkin' Donuts Keurig cups ready to go for the next month. And so, Let's compare that. I'm gonna think about you and I'm gonna make subscriptions for you and I'm gonna do that versus we cannot guarantee you'll find what you want in the store, but there'll be many things you can enjoy. To me, that is, I think we're gonna look back on this and we are gonna see serious issues with Starbucks going forward about stepping in reverse versus stepping forward. So let's shift now and do a little case study on stepping forward. We conducted some research here at Valuetainment and talked to a lot of people, reached out to them, not, not scientific research of thousands of surveys, but some good honest research, and we came to this. We think that what Starbucks should be thinking about is speed, price, and product. Here's what we mean. The people in the Pacific Northwest, maybe they like Pikes Peak Roast because they have coffee tastes that are kind of like wine. They want boldness and real smokiness to it. But if you go to the Midwest and you go to the Northeast, most people tell you that that Pikes Peak Roast is, is stronger than they want. That bold medium Dunkin' Donuts or a bold medium coffee, whether it's Dunkin' or not, is really what they want. I like a little sweetness in my coffee, and I notice it takes like three yellows, remember yellow, pink, or blue, pick your sugar, three yellows just in a tall to knock it down enough so I can taste just a little bit of sweetness. And that's because that Pikes Peak is so strong. We think that, you know, different strokes for different folks, and, and there's some ad adaptation around the nation in terms of the product that should be there. 
It says, second is price. McDonald's and Dunkin' and uh, Coffee Bean are highly competitive now with Starbucks for your morning coffee or an iced coffee. And as a matter of fact, we did a little taste test and people had the, um, a couple iced coffee beverages. This one was a drive through McDonald's that they got for you in like two minutes. This one I had to wait for at Starbucks. Guess what? They were very, very similar. Well, let me tell you, two twenty-nine, five bucks. You can't be similar when that's the that's the difference. Now let's talk about. Well, wait a minute, Tom. Starbucks gives you an experience. You listen to the music. You hang out. Maybe you read some things on your phone. And at McDonald's, I'm just trying to get in and out. Let me tell you, at 8 a.m. when everybody's going to work, everybody wants to get in and out, and that brings us to speed. I think Starbucks has missed speed. Many years ago, they installed the bigger um, machines where they had two baristas running. But then what they allowed people to do is order online. And I've noticed when I would go to Starbucks, I'd be in line, I'd be standing there. My name wouldn't be called, but I would watch like eight drinks get made and put right on the shelf where it's like the pickup for people ordering in the app. So, you know, that was convenient if you have an app and you just run in and run out, but it actually impacts speed in the store. So. I don't have detailed statistics on that, but I haven't yet to speak to somebody in the last week while we were researching this that said, are you happy with the speed at your normal Starbucks at 745, 8, 8, 15, where you go in the morning? Everybody said no. They said, actually, it's slower than I remember. Yeah, um, and I can't specifically tell you how many minutes, but it's slower than I remember, and it's kind of a drag. And some of the um, drive-up Starbucks, people said the line was so long for cars that uh, one of our team, my, my incredible producer, gets out of her car, goes and walks up to the window to, to order it. Because there's like, hey, walk-up window, order here too. And she might as well have been in her car, like eighth car in line, because she sat there on this little bench in the outside at a walk-up window, like she's buying tickets to the movie, waiting for a coffee. So I think there's a whole set of things around speed, price, and product that Starbucks needs to evaluate. And I don't think the issue is, is necessarily what they think it is, is turning off your store, backing out of Tiavana. Now, if they're not doing well and they do that, okay. But there's gotta be, I'm waiting and I'm listening carefully for Starbucks to talk about what positive steps they're doing going forward. And that is the mini case study on Starbucks I think we should all watch for is saying, hey, when are we gonna hear about some positive announcement for the future? Rather than backward announcements that start with, we cannot, from a company who once upon a time, Howard Schultz says, oh yes we can, and we're gonna close the stores and make sure everybody knows how to make it. Yes we can, we can give you good experience, we can give you good coffee, we can get good training for our people, yes we can. Now they have a statement that's up there saying, we cannot, we cannot guarantee you can get what you want, Really? This is the same company? Well, maybe no coincidence, Schultz stepped back into the role of executive chairman in February of this year. Maybe his absence is already being seen. Certainly sounds like he's still gonna be involved with these uh, reserve roasteries that are supposed to be super high-end coffee shops, but um, I don't know. If you find yourself making announcements or thinking about things that are going backwards, stop yourself in your tracks. Whether you're a small startup or you're with an established company, that's probably a sign that you're flat and things are worse than you think. And what you should be thinking about is your next innovative move to move the ball forward. Thank you for watching. And I need Pillow X, the famous Pillow X. Thank you for watching Valuetainment and Case Studies with the BizDoc. We are the number one channel on the internet for entrepreneurial content. And until next time, I'm Tom Ellsworth, and I hope I left you better than I found you. Go get your favorite coffee.